Chapter 11, Substance Related Addictive and Impulsive Control Disorders. This is my summary of Barlow and Duran's Abnormal Psychology 7th Edition textbook. To begin with, Substance Related and Addictive Disorders is the abuse of drugs and other substances that individuals use to change the way they think, behave, and feel. Impulse Control Disorders is the inability to resist acting on drive or temptation. Polysubstance use is the use of regular and significant significant numbers of illicit drugs and abusing prescription medication. Psychoactive substances are those that alter the mood and behavior and includes cocaine, heroin, caffeine, and nicotine. Now I'll be talking about the terms used generally in substance um, use and abuse. This includes, well, substance use, which is the ingestion of psychoactive substances in moderate use, but it doesn't significantly interfere with social, occupational, or educational functioning. On the other hand, substance intoxication is where there is a physiological reaction to the ingestion of substances, and these include drunkenness and getting high. There is also substance abuse, which is how significantly a substance interferes with a user's life, and this disruption could manifest in jobs, uh, relationships, finances, etc. Addiction is usually characterized by substance dependence, which is when an individual becomes physiologically dependent on the substance. Tolerance is when an individual requires increasing amounts of the substance for the same effect because they develop tolerance, hence tolerance. Withdrawal are when addicts respond with a negative physical reaction when the substance is no longer digested. So this would be like negative uh, symptoms when those who are addicted to the substance no longer have access to it. Now I'll be talking about the types of drug uh, substances. These include depressants, which cause behavioral sedation and relaxation and can include substances like alcohol. Uh, there are stimulants, which increases alertness, activity, and elates mood. For example, amphetamines, cocaine, nicotine, and caffeine are all stimulants. Opiates. These produce temporary analgesia, which uh, reduces pain and brings about euphoria. Examples of opiates include heroin, codeine, morphine, Hallucinogens are substances that alter the sensory perceptions and produces delusions, paranoia, and hallucination. They include LSD and cannabis. Other drugs of abuse include drugs that don't fit into the above categories. These uh, include inhalant, which can include airplane glue as well as anabolic steroids or prescription medication like nitrous oxide, a gas. Alcohol-related disorders. Continued use of alcohol to the point of abuse that is, produces impairment in motor conditions such as slurred speech, staggering, the slowing down of reaction time. Uh, the individuals become confused and their ability to make judgments is reduced. Vision and hearing are negatively affected. Alcohol affects GABA, which is an inhibitory neurotransmitter that causes chloride to enter the cell and makes other cells less receptive to other neurotransmitters. It affects glutamate, which is involved in memory and learning by causing blackouts. Serotonin is responsible for craving and affects mood, sleep, and eating habits. Withdrawal delirium slash delirium tremens DTs. This is when individuals are when individuals have frightening hallucinations and body tremors when an alcoholic is withdrawn. Wernick-Kosakoff syndrome produces symptoms like confusion, loss of muscle coordination and unintelligible speech. Since uh, the alcohol abuse leads to deficiency in thiamine, which is a vitamin that becomes poorly metabolized. Fetal alcohol syndrome, FAS. This is when a mother drinks alcohol while pregnant. Her child suffers from fetal growth retardation, cognitive deficit, behavioral problems, and learning difficulties. There is also alcohol dehydrogenase, ADH, which is an enzyme used to metabolize alcohol. And um, it has three different forms, either beta 1, beta 2, or beta 3. Moving along, I'll now be talking about sedative, hypnotic, or anxiolytic related disorders. To begin with, barbiturates such as amatol, sicano, and nembutol are a family of sedative drugs synthesized in Germany in 1882. They were prescribed to help people sleep and replace drugs like alcohol and opium. They were widely prescribed in the 1930s and 40s. Heavy uses of these barbiturates include symptoms of slurred speech, difficulty in 
concentration, walking, and working death by suffocation, since the diaphragm becomes so relaxed. There are also drugs like benzodiazepines. Benzodiazepines like Valium, Xanax, and Ativan, which were developed in the 60s to reduce anxiety and served as a muscle relaxant, anticonvulsant, anti-seizure, and um, to induce sleep. It was safer than barbiturates, but these substances can also be abused, whereby individuals taking this medication can develop tolerance and withdrawal. Stimulant-related disorders, amphetamines. Uh, a low dose of amphetamines induces elation, vigor, and reduces fatigue, but it produces a crash, or what is described as a crash, whereby the individual then feels depressed or tired after this elated period. Amphetamines were prescribed for narcolepsy, which is excessive sleep, and individuals with ADHD. Amphetamine use disorders are behavioral symptoms like euphoria, affective blindness, Hunting, which is the lack of emotional expression, changes in sociability, interpersonal sensitivity, tension, anger, impaired social, as well as occupational functioning. Cocaine, which is derived from the coca plant, produces symptoms of induced paranoia and makes the heart beat faster. Uh, it also makes the heart beat irregularly and produces brain damage in fetuses. Abuse of cocaine uh, leads to cocaine use disorders. There is also tobacco-related disorders, which is when an individual becomes dependent, tolerates, and has withdrawal symptoms to smoking tobacco uh, slash nicotine. Caffeine-related disorders exist, and this is when there are large doses that, are, that make individuals feel jittery and produce insomnia, whereby it takes six hours to be processed. Withdrawal from coffee produces headaches, drowsiness, and unpleasantness. It blocks adenosine reuptake and affects dopamine. Opiates. These are natural chemicals in the opium poppy that have a narcotic effect by relieving pain and inducing sleep. Opioid-related disorders, which includes the abuse of heroin, methadone, hydrocodone, oxycodone, and other substances like beta endorphins, enkephalines, enkephalins, and dynorphins. Opioid-related disorders reduces euphoria, drowsiness, slow breath. High doses, however, lead to death by suffocation, and individuals with this disorder experience withdrawal for 6 to 12 hours. Hours and um, symptoms of withdrawal include nausea, chills, muscle aches, insomnia, diarrhea, and yawning. Cannabis. Uh, marijuana is the dried part of cannabis, and basically cannabis effects include heightened sensory experiences, vivid colors, appreciating the subtleties of music, dreamlike state, and um, seeing normal experiences as funny. Individuals who take cannabis also have mood swings. Abuse of cannabis culminates in cannabis use disorder, which produces dizziness, hallucinations, and paranoia when large doses are taken. Cannabis use disorder could also bring about seizures and heart rhythm problems. Individuals with this disorder develop tolerance and minor withdrawal symptoms like restlessness, appetite loss, nausea, and insomnia. Hallucinogen-related disorders. This is brought about by the abuse of substances like LSD or d lysergic acid, diphylamine, psilocybin, and mescaline. Quote-unquote acid produces a trip, which is um, a hallucination as well as other symptoms like convulsions and delirium. It is similar to cannabis, whereby perceptual changes like subjective intensification of perception and depersonalization occur. Also, other, let's say, more physiological symptoms include pupil dilation, rapid heartbeat, sweating, and blurred vision. Hallucinogen use disorder uh, when individuals have bad trips which are frightening but hallucinogens uh, they do not have withdrawal symptoms okay now I would be talking about causes of substance abuse substance abuse could have derived from familial or genetic influences peer pressure media influences the lack of parental monitoring mood disorders positive reinforcement as in the need to maintain pleasure which also would imply 
imply that the individual has uh, difficulty in regulating impulses or they are hedonists. Um, and also individuals who have negative reinforcement towards the substance, whereby they need to take things like opiates to reduce pain or avoid unpleasantness. Agonist substitution is providing individuals with a safe drug which has a similar chemical makeup to the addictive drug. For example, methadone is an opiate that is used as a heroin substitute. It has a fast, high, and sedation like heroin, but once the individual becomes tolerant to this drug, it loses its analgesic and sedative aspects. There are also antagonist drugs which are used to block and counteract the effects of psychoactive drugs like naltrexone for opiates. Other ways to control uh, substance abuse includes controlling drinking. Well, this is in the case of alcohol, whereby teaching individuals to drink in moderation or fast or reduced intake of it. Gambling disorder. Um, other disorders which are not necessarily substance disorders, but kind of for kind of have similar symptoms to it, like withdrawal and uh, constant obsession or persistence with uh, said activity. Let's say is gambling disorder. Gambling disorder is the inability to resist the urge to gamble, which results in negative personal consequences, like for example, divorce or loss of employment. There are also impulse control disorders. Um, these include the three below, like intermittent explosive disorders, which is where intermittent explosion episodes are driven by aggressive impulses that result in serious assault or destruction of property. It is treated using CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, and it is tied with legal ramifications as well. Kleptomania is the urge to steal things and to gain pleasure while theft is committed. Kleptomaniacs are treated by the use of antidepressants. Again, this impulse disorder has legal ramifications. Pyromania is the impulse to light things on fire. Yet again, another set of legal ramifications. So in conclusion, we covered substance use disorders as well as addictive and impulsive control disorders. We looked at uh, poly substance use, psychoactive substances, substance use, substance intoxication, substance abuse, addiction, substance dependence, tolerance, withdrawal, depressants, stimulants, opiates, hallucinogens, other drugs of abuse, alcohol related disorders, withdrawal, delirium, 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 delirium tremens, Wernick, Kosakoff's disease, fetal alcohol syndrome, alcohol dehydrogenase, sedative, hypnotic, or anxiolytic related disorders, barbiturates, benzodiazepines, stimulant related disorders like amphetamine, amphetamine use disorder, cocaine, tobacco related disorders, caffeine related disorders, opiate, opioid, opioid related disorders, cannabis, marijuana, uh, which is just the dried parts of cannabis, cannabis use disorder, hallucinogen related disorders, hallucinogen use disorders. Causes of substance abuse, agonist substitute, methadone, antagonist drugs, control drinking, gambling disorder, impulse control disorders, intermittent explosive disorders, kleptomania, and pyromania. Thanks for watching, and be sure to. Uh, never mind.